Anime, My One Hit Kill Sister Continuing to Episode 5, Asahi was at the guild to accept a new mission. There, Tanya asked Asahi to undertake a dungeon investigation mission. Someone had discovered a new dungeon entrance in the Claudio Forest. If after the investigation it turned out that the dungeon was not too dangerous, it would be open for other adventurers of lower level than Asahi. Currently, Asahi was a level ogre adventurer, all thanks to Maya. The reason the dungeon was recently discovered was due to a mysterious disaster that occurred a while ago. The disaster had even altered the topography of the Claudio Forest. According to rumors, the disaster was caused by a fierce battle between two powerful creatures. Asahi suspected that the battle mentioned was surely between Maya and Kilmaria. After being praised as a hero by Tanya, Asahi became ecstatic and gladly accepted the mission. On the way to the dungeon, a horned black panther targeted Asahi. Fortunately, Maya was also following Asahi and realized that he was being threatened. Maya swiftly dispatched the panther without hesitation. After some time, Asahi finally arrived in front of the dungeon entrance. As a high-level adventurer, he wanted to tackle the mission alone today. But fate had other plans. Maya, who had been trailing him all along, now revealed herself in front of Asahi. In the end, Asahi was still accompanied by Maya. Inside the dungeon, Maya asked something. In truth, Maya didn't know what a dungeon was. As a gamer, Asahi enthusiastically explained it to her. A dungeon was a closed labyrinth filled with many monsters and traps. There were also ancient relics and usually a dungeon boss awaiting at the deepest part. Exploring a dungeon was the dream of every gamer and fantasy enthusiast. Asahi then explained how to conquer a dungeon. There was a trick to always follow the left hand that remained in contact with the wall. By continuously moving forward with that hand, they wouldn't get lost. However, Asahi accidentally triggered a trap wall that made arrows target him. Luckily, Maya instinctively destroyed it. Asahi fell due to the shock, but it caused him to step on another trap. The floor beneath Maya's feet opened up, revealing numerous sharp spikes below. Of course, Maya easily evaded that situation. They decided to hold hands to avoid getting separated and lost. As they moved to another room, they felt a sudden chill in the air. It turned out that a group of undead creatures was approaching them. Maya intended to defeat them all with her magic. However, Asahi stopped her from doing so. He was concerned that Maya's powerful magic would collapse the dungeon. They could end up buried alive there. Asahi intended to defeat the undead creatures with his own abilities. He used his level 1 stone throwing skill, which, of course, could be easily deflected by the undead. Then, Maya destroyed the undead one by one solely with her physical strength. After delving deeper, they arrived in a room resembling a ruined throne. This room was the deepest part of the dungeon. However, it seemed that there was no boss waiting there. Behind the throne, there were three bear cubs playing. It appeared that Kaiser Bear, whom Kilmaria had defeated before, was the parent of these bear cubs. Asahi became conflicted. If this dungeon were to be open to the public, these bear cubs could be hunted by adventurers. Asahi decided not to open the dungeon to the public. Besides, the dungeon was inherently unstable and prone to collapse. Maya seemed quite proud of Asahi's decision. After exiting the dungeon, Asahi felt hungry and wanted to go home immediately. Maya, upon hearing this, hurriedly went alone to the house to cook. Asahi was now alone. Unfortunately, after that, Asahi was surrounded by a group of horned black panthers. Asahi was clearly defenseless against them. However, he managed to escape using the escape skill and ran with all his might. Even when he reached the town, he was still gasping for breath. At that moment, a woman suddenly called out to Asahi. The woman wanted to ask for directions in this town. She asked Asahi to accompany her. However, when the woman approached him, Asahi immediately used the escape skill. Upon closer observation, the woman had an unusual aura. It was clear that she was not an ordinary citizen. The woman finally revealed herself as Kilmaria. She was quite impressed that Asahi could sense it, even if only a little. Kilmaria used mind cloaking magic to deceive the thoughts of others, making them see her as an ordinary citizen. Asahi asked why Kilmaria was in disguise in this town. It turned out that Kilmaria wanted to experience human life. She wanted to explore the town with Asahi. Asahi was somewhat hesitant to accompany her. 
Phil Maria read Asahi's thoughts and it seemed that Asahi was afraid of being labeled a traitor for accompanying the general of the demon king around the town. However, Kill Maria had no ill intentions coming to this town. After meeting Asahi and Maya, Kill Maria became interested in human life. Asahi finally agreed. While exploring, Kill Maria was impressed to see many weak humans gathered. The town also had many large buildings. Kill Maria had the urge to level everything when she saw it. Asahi then took her to a bridge. Kill Maria had seen bridges before, but this was the first time she crossed one. She felt sorry for humans who couldn't cross rivers without bridges. After wandering for quite a while, evening came. As their final destination, they reached the top of a clock tower. The sunset view from up there was breathtaking. Kill Maria noticed that Asahi didn't seem too happy. She read Asahi's thoughts and discovered that he was thinking about Maya. In the dungeon, Asahi often scolded Maya because he didn't want to be treated like a child. He felt somewhat guilty. Kill Maria didn't expect that even such close siblings could still have problems. Human nature was indeed complicated. Then, Kill Maria offered Asahi to become a demon. Unlike humans, demons possessed great and useful power. If he was willing, she asked Asahi to leave Maya and live with her. Asahi declined the offer. He couldn't leave Maya. After all, Maya was his family. After leaving the clock tower, Asahi went to report to the guild about the dungeon he had just explored. Hill Maria accompanied him, even holding onto Asahi's arm. Tanya became angry when she saw another woman near Asahi. Tanya gave Asahi his mission reward in an angry tone. After that, Kill Maria invited Asahi to go eat. Asahi realized he hadn't eaten anything all day. They arrived at a restaurant and ordered meat. Kill Maria ordered a beer while Asahi had a glass of juice. Kill Maria ate there, piling up plates and continuously ordering more beer. She seemed to be truly enjoying herself. When they were full, Kill Maria intended to leave the restaurant just like that. The owner of the restaurant clearly stopped her because Kill Maria had to pay first before leaving. It turned out Kill Maria didn't understand what money was. Fortunately, Asahi was willing to pay Kill Maria's bill as well. It was better than causing a scene and having Kill Maria demonstrate her power. The money from his recent mission reward was completely depleted after eating a lot at that restaurant. After leaving the restaurant, the two of them met Zeke. He assumed Asahi was on a date with Kill Maria. Zeke introduced himself to Kill Maria and shook her hand. When he did so, he felt a dangerous aura from Kill Maria. It was like a venomous snake threatening him. Zeke asked who the girl next to Asahi really was. Asahi didn't reveal Kill Maria's identity and just said she was his friend. Zeke immediately excused himself, feeling suddenly unwell. Maya, who was still a little drunk, suggested going for more drinks, but at Asahi's house. They arrived in front of Asahi's house. Kill Maria was quite impressed because the atmosphere was different from the last time she had been there. Of course, it was because Asahi and Maya had cleaned and renovated the house. Before entering, Kill Maria had the idea to prank Maya by taking on her human form. Asahi seemed to agree with the idea. Then, they both entered. Kill Maria was tightly holding onto Asahi's arm, introducing herself as his girlfriend. Maya immediately hit Kill Maria with a broom. She wasn't fooled by Kill Maria's magic. Despite her changed appearance, Maya could still sense her suspicious aura. Kill Maria was indeed impressed, but she came as a guest this time. So why was she being hit with a broom? Provoked by anger, they were ready to fight again. Asahi was tired of seeing them fight and asked them to stop. Besides, the house could be destroyed if they fought. Maya had cooked a lot for Asahi and was waiting for him to come home. Asahi felt happy, but he had just eaten with Kill Maria. At that moment, Kill Maria snapped her fingers and used her magic to make Asahi hungry again. Kill Maria headed to the dining table to eat together. However, Maya didn't allow Kill Maria to join them. Kill Maria pouted on the floor, wanting to eat human food again. Asahi pleaded with Maya to let Kill Maria join them for the meal. Asahi, who was hungry again, immediately devoured the various dishes in front of him. He expressed his gratitude for being cooked a meal. It reminded him of how he used to be frequently cooked for as well. Asahi praised Maya's cooking skills. Kill Maria was initially hesitant to try Maya's dishes. She agreed that they looked appealing, but she wasn't sure about the taste. She took a small bite of the food. It was so delicious that she felt like she was flying in the sky. 
Hill Maria acted a bit coy in front of Maya, not wanting to appear too fond of her cooking. Nevertheless, she continued to devour the food one by one. Maya felt like she had won a competition seeing how much Hill Maria enjoyed her cooking. Hill Maria responded that she needed to taste other humans' food before deciding who was the winner or loser. That's why Hill Maria intended to drop by Maya's house again tomorrow. She was truly an audacious guest. According to Hill Maria, whether cooking for two or three people, the portion was the same. So there was no harm in joining them for another meal. Asahi became happy because their dining table was now lively like this. This is the end of episode 5. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss part 6 of this series recap.